Independent Media Center The Independent Media Center is an open publishing network of journalist collectives that report on political and social issues. It originated during the Seattle anti-WTO protests worldwide in 1999 and remains closely associated with the global justice movement, which criticizes neoliberalism and its associated institutions. Several local branches of the network have been raided by law enforcement over the years. According to the Umbrella homepage, Indie Media is a collective of independent media organizations and hundreds of journalists offering grassroots, non-corporate coverage. It aims to be an alternative to government and corporate media, and seeks to facilitate people being able to publish their media as directly as possible. The origins of Indie Media can be traced to the global justice protest carnival against capitalism, which took place in over 40 countries on June 18, 1999. Activists had networked globally using the Internet, and had seen its publishing potential. Events could be reported as they happened, unmediated and without the need for the traditional news outlets. Plants came together for an independent media center to cover the upcoming Seattle WTO protests in November. The open publishing software used by the center was developed from that used to report the carnival in Sydney. In late November 1999, the first indie media project was ready to cover the protests against the WTO meeting in Seattle, Washington. It acted as an alternative news source publishing up to the minute reports on the protest days. Additionally it produced a newspaper and five documentaries. After Seattle the idea and network spread rapidly. By 2002, there were 89 indie media websites in 31 countries, growing to over 150 by January 2006. The number of active centers grew from 142, in 2004, to 175 in 2010. However, by 2014 the network had declined significantly, with the number of active sites down to 68. A number of reasons for the decline have been put forward. In an article published by the journal Convergence Eva Jira summarized some of the different arguments that had been made by academics and activists, which included informal hierarchy, bureaucracy, security issues including IP address logging, lack of regional engagement, lack of class politics, increase in Web 2.0 social media use, website underdevelopment, decline in volunteers and decline in the global justice movement. Alternative Bristol pointed to security reasons for the decline. It stated that since server seizures Indie Media UK has been used less and less with on average only one new posting per week. It added activists are moving to alternative media content providers and more secure methods since the Snowden leaks. Most obviously, the rise of corporate social media sites and the massification of open publishing appropriated indie media's key innovations for the cultural industry. In 2011, the UK national site saw a conflict in which direction it should take. One side wanted the site to remain the same, another group wanted it to become an aggregator for the regional centers. In February 2013, Ceasefire magazine noted a decline in the use of Nottingham Indie Media, stating that activist use of commercial social media had increased. In 2014, the Bristol site was archived and closed after police server seizures. Servers in the UK was seized by police in June 2005. An anonymous post on the Bristol Indie Media server, came to police attention for suggesting an action against a freight train carrying new cars as part of a protest against cars and climate change in the run-up to the year's Glen Eagles G8 summit. The police claimed that the poster broke the law by incitement to criminal damage, and sought access logs from the server operators. Despite being warned by lawyers that the servers were journalistic equipment and subject to special laws, the police proceeded with the seizure and a member of the Bristol Indie Media Group was arrested. Indie Media was supported in this matter by the National Union of Journalists, Liberty, and Privacy International, along with others. This incident ended several months later with no charges being brought by the police and the equipment returned. Prior to the original server being returned, Bristol Indie Media was donated a replacement server by local IT cooperative, Bristol Wireless. In August 2014, Bristol Indie Media's servers were seized by police after arsonists used the site to claim responsibility for a fire at Firearms Training Center. Bristol Indie Media stated that they will not cooperate with the authorities and that they do not intend to voluntarily hand over information to the police as they have requested. On August 15, 2000, the Los Angeles Police Department temporarily shut down the satellite uplink and production studio at the Los Angeles Independent Media Center on its first night of Democratic National Convention coverage claiming explosives were in a van in the adjacent parking lot. On October 7, 2004, 
The FBI took possession of several server hard drives used by a number of IMCs and hosted by US-based Rackspace managed hosting. The servers in question were located in the United Kingdom and managed by the British arm of Rackspace, but some 20 mainly European IMC websites were affected, and several unrelated websites were affected, including the website of a Linux distribution. No reasons were given at first by the FBI and Rackspace for the seizure, in particular IMC was not informed. Rackspace claimed that it was banned from giving further information about the incident. Some, but not all, of the legal documents relating to the confiscation of the servers were unsealed by a Texas district court in August 2005, following legal action by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The documents revealed that the only action requested by the government was to surrender server log files. A statement by Rackspace stated that the company had been forced to comply with a court order under the procedures laid out by the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty which governs international police cooperation on international terrorism, kidnapping and money laundering. The investigation that led to the court order was said to have arisen outside of the U.S. Rackspace stated that they were prohibited on giving further detail. Agents France Press reported FBI spokesman Joe Paris, who said the incident was not an FBI operation, but that the subpoena had been issued at the request of the Italian and the Swiss governments. Again, no further details on specific allegations were given. UK involvement was denied in an answer given to a parliamentary question posed by Richard Allen, Liberal Democrat MP. Indy Media pointed out that they were not contacted by the FBI and that no specific information was released on the reasons for seizing the servers. Indy Media also sees the incident in the context of numerous attacks on independent media by the US federal government, including a subpoena to obtain it blogs from Indy Media at the occasion of the Republican National Conference the shutdown of several community radio stations in the U.S. by the FCC, and a request by the FBI to remove a post on Nance IMC containing a photograph of alleged undercover Swiss police. The move was condemned by the International Federation of Journalists, who stated that the way this has been done smacks more of intimidation of legitimate journalistic inquiry than crime-busting and called for an investigation. Criticism was also voiced by European civil liberties organization Statewatch and the World Association of Community Radio Broadcasters. Matthew Honan commented in Salon that this kind of thing doesn't happen to Wolf Blitzer. EFF attorney Kurt Opsahl compared the case with Steve Jackson Games Inc. v. United States Secret Service. On January 30, 2009. One of the system administrators of the server that hosts IndyMedia.us received a grand jury subpoena from the Southern District of Indiana Federal Court. The subpoena asked the administrator to provide all IP addresses, times, and any other identifying information for every visitor to the site in June 25, 2008. The subpoena also included a gag order that stated that the recipient is not to disclose the existence of this request unless authorized by the assistant U.S. attorney. The administrator of IndyMedia.us could not have provided the information because IndyMedia sites generally do not keep up address logs. The Electronic Frontier Foundation determined that there was no legal basis for the gag order, and that the subpoena request violated the SCA's restrictions on what types of data the government could obtain using a subpoena. Under Justice Department guidelines, subpoenas to news media must have the authorization of the Attorney General. According to a CBS News blog, the subpoena of IndyMedia.us was never submitted to the Attorney General for review. On February 25, 2009, a United States attorney sent a letter to an attorney with the Electronic Frontier Foundation stating that the subpoena had been withdrawn. In July, 2001 at the 27th G8 Summit in Genoa, Italian police assaulted IndyMedia journalists at the Armando Diaz School where IndyMedia had set up a temporary office and radio station. Twenty-nine police officers were indicted for beating people planting evidence and wrongful arrest during the nighttime raid. 13 were convicted. In Italy, the federal prosecutor of Belloni Marina Plazzi confirmed that an investigation against Indy Media had been opened because of suspected support of terrorism, in the context of Italian troops in the Iraqi city of Nasiriya. The investigation was triggered after 17 members of the coalition government belonging to the right-wing Alianza Nazionale, including Alessandra Mussolini, demanded that Indy Media be shut down. A senior party member and government official had announced cooperation with U.S. authorities, and party spokesman Mario Landolfi welcomed the FBI's seizure of the Indy Media servers. Left wing Italian politicians denounced the move and called for an investigation. In the aftermath of the violent 2017 G20 Hamburg summit protests, the German Federal Ministry of the Interior, 
Building and Community banned the German chapter of the network, Linksenden.indie Media. The ministry described the network as the central communications platform among far-left extremists pro netto violence and stated that it was used to spread information about violent protest tactics. German internet service providers were ordered to block communication to the website. The German police also raided the addresses of several leading members and supporters of the Indie Media Network in the baden württemberg region. They seized knives, batons, pipes and slingshots from the apartments of the activists. On October 27, 2006, New York-based journalist and indie media volunteer Bradley Roland Wu was killed along with two Mexican protesters in the city of Oaxaca. People had been demonstrating in the city since May as part of an uprising prompted by a teacher's strike. Lisbeth Cana, attorney general of Oaxaca, claimed the conflict was caused by the protesters and that the gunmen who engaged them were upset residents from the area. The U.S. ambassador to Mexico, Tony Garza, however, claimed the men may have been local police. Reporters Without Borders condemned the actions of the Mexican government in allowing the accused to go free. Protesters also alleged that the men were police and not local residents. Associated Press alleged that the protesters also had guns, describing the conflict as a shootout. In April 2008, in Brazil, IMC and Bradwell received the Medal Chico Mendes de Resistencia from the Brazilian humanitarian group Tortura Nunca May for their contributions to human rights and a more fair society. The active software that was used as the basis for the first Indie Media Center's websites was written for Active Sydney. It went live in January 1999 featuring open publishing, calendars, events and contacts. In March, around 100 Sydney organizations were listed. The active software consisted of a number of scripts and used the LAMP software stack. In June 1999, the software's news feed feature was used to publish stories. Pictures and videos from the Carnival Against Capitalism. The active software was then further developed by an international collective of activists that included personnel from Active Sydney and Free Speech TV. It was ready to be used for the Seattle Indie Media Center set up to cover the WTO protests that November. In 2001, Matthew Arneson, one of the original authors of Active, compared open publishing to Libre Software. The original Active software has been forked a number of times. Other indie media content management systems have been written from the ground up. By 2004, the most widely adopted CMS software solutions were MIR, Active SF, and .IMC. Hyperactive was used by DeMarc, London, and Nottingham centers. Some centers, such as Bolivia and Quebec Indie Media, use general purpose content management systems such as Drupal. Notable custom indie media content management systems include Oscale, used by Ireland Indie Media. Version 3.6 was released in March 2016. Indie media collectives distribute print, audio, photographic, and video media. They run open publishing websites which allow anyone to upload news articles. The content of an indie media collective is determined by its participants, both the users who post content, and members of the local collective who administer the site. Centers worldwide are run autonomously, however they all provide copyleft content. This rule means content on indie media sites can be freely reproduced for non-commercial purposes. Streamed indie media content was shown on Free Speech TV in 2004. Indie media websites publish in a number of languages, including English, Spanish, German, Italian, Portuguese, French, Russian, Arabic, and Hebrew. The origins of indie media centers themselves came out of protests against the concentrated ownership and perceived biases in corporate media reporting. The first indie media note, attached as it was to the Seattle anti corporate globalization protests, was seen by activists as an alternative news source to thout the corporate media, which they accused of only showing violence and confrontation, and portraying all protesters negatively. Reports between 1999 and 2001 tended to focus on up to the minute coverage of protests, from local demonstrations to summits where anti-globalization movement protests were occurring. In 2007, protest coverage was still published. Indie Media run a global radio project which aggregates audio RSS feeds from around the world. Indie Media is formed of local collectives. They are run autonomously. But common rules include openness, inclusiveness and diversity. Editorial policies, locally chosen by any indie media collectives often involve removing articles which are believed to promote racism, sexism, hate speech, and homophobia. A clearly stated editorial policy is expected to be available on collectives' websites. 
In a 2002 op-ed, alter globalization activist Naomi Klein criticized indie media for posting excerpts from the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. In the same year, the Swiss edition of Indie Media was accused of anti-Semitism by Auction Kinder de Holocaust, which unsuccessfully sued them for publishing a Carlos Ladoff cartoon of a Jewish boy in the Warsaw Ghetto saying I am Palestinian, though this was criticized by IMC as an attempt to stifle criticism of Israel and Switzerland. Google temporarily stopped including some IMCs in Google News searches due to the use of the term Zionazi. Marissa Meyer at the time the product manager of Google News, explained the removal by describing the term as a degrading, hateful slur and refused to index the Bay Area IMC because it had appeared there. While SF Bay Area Indie Media agreed that it could be considered hate speech, they considered this a double standard due to Google News indexing articles using language they considered racist and defamatory against Arabs and Muslims, such as the term Islamofascism. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.